Okay, so welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to be going through a BIOS update on this Stone laptop. This is a Stone NT310-H laptop. It's Haswell-based processors. Uh, and we're going to update the BIOS on it to the latest version uh, available from the Stone website. Uh, I'm actually doing this to upgrade this down the line to a better processor. Um, and you generally want the latest BIOS for that. But you could want to do this for any number of reasons. It's pretty straightforward to do. Uh, all it takes is a little bit of your time and some patience. All you're going to need is a laptop plugged into the mains. Make sure it is plugged in on charge. Also advisable to have some charge in the battery in case the power does go out. And then you're just going to want a USB stick, just a standard. Any old USB will do basically. It doesn't have to be big. This is a 16 gig one, but a 1 gigabyte one would do. Um, so yeah, and then what you're going to need is a computer probably running Windows which I'll plug this stick into my computer and go over there now with a screen recorder and we'll set up the USB stick first okay so when you get on the computer the first thing you're going to want to do is get into this PC on my computer uh, and plug in your USB stick please note if you've got anything on your USB stick now is the time to copy it off because we are going to wipe and erase this stick mine's already blank and empty as you can see but I'm just going to reformat it in here again for good measure. So I'm just going to make it FAT32, quick format, and wipe it. The next thing you're going to want to do is go onto the Stone website and actually find the BIOS update for your specific laptop. So check the model number on the bottom of your laptop, put it into the website, and find the page how to update the BIOS. This will actually guide you through updating it, so you could just follow this if you wanted, or alternatively, you can follow this video guide that I'm making here. So as you can see here, BIOS updates available. Uh, what you're supposed to do is prepare a Windows 98 pen drive and download the latest BIOS file. So if you click BIOS file here, this will give you a download for the latest software, like you can see, and you can save file and store that to your computer. The next step is to get a program called Rufus, from rufus.ie and download this. It's a free program made for creating bootable USB sticks basically and it can also create a free DOS based USB stick for you. So if you scroll down to download the latest version here or alternatively you can download the portable version which means you don't have to actually install it. I usually download the portable version. Just click that and save the file. Once you've downloaded both of those files you'll have the BIOS zip file and the roughest program itself. So what we can do here is if you either click the file and extract it from up here, extract all, you can do it that way. Choose where you want to save them and click extract and that'll give you them all. If you're running an older version of Windows like Windows 7 that doesn't have the top bar, right click the zip and go extract all and then it'll bring you up to the same point. In the unzipped file, you should have all these files here, which are what you will need to do the BIOS update. I would just rename this folder now to BIOS, and then what you want to do is run Rufus. Click yes if it prompts you to run the program. Uh, when it asks you to check for updates, you can go yes or no, that's totally up to you and then the program will open like this. It should automatically select your USB stick here. So notice mine is called Kingston, which it was called F and 16 gig. If you've got multiple drives here, do make sure that you're choosing the right one because this will completely wipe and erase everything off the stick you select. So over here, boot selection, change disk or ISO image to free DOS. You can leave everything else the same. You can give it a name if you want, I'm just going to leave mine Kingston and click start. This will give you a warning that everything's going to be destroyed and wiped. Just click OK. And then this will take about a minute to complete, depending on the speed of your USB stick. When it's finished, the status at the bottom will just change to ready. And then you can click close. Now if you copy the BIOS folder, the unpacked one, we'll copy that. And if you go to this PC again, select your Kingston or whatever, select your USB stick and then on there now you should have an auto run 
and a locale here. Just paste the BIOS folder onto the USB stick, like so. Check that all the files are still in it. Then we can go back and eject the USB stick. We're done on the computer now. Okay, so now we've got our USB stick created on the PC. We can go to starting the laptop and updating the BIOS itself. So what you're going to want to do is plug the stick in before you turn it on into a USB port and then turn the laptop on. Now when we turn it on and it lights up and starts to boot you want to keep pressing the F2 key to enter the BIOS or the F7 key to enter the startup menu because then we can enter the BIOS from there. That is what the keys usually are on all stone laptops. You can check on the website if yours is different but I'm just going to keep pressing F2 and F7 when I turn this on. It may or may not enter the BIOS first time. If it doesn't and starts to load Windows, we hold the button down to kill the power to the laptop and then we'll turn it on again and it will enter. Windows 10, if fast boot is enabled, or Windows 8, 8.1 etc, overrides the ability to enter the BIOS on some laptops. And by killing the power to it and making it fail to start up successfully, it then will take notice of the buttons being pressed. So I'll try this first and show you what I mean. So we're going to keep pressing F2 and F7. And it didn't do it, see, because the logo has come up and it's spinning. So just hold down the power button. And keep it held until it forcefully turns off. Then we'll turn the laptop back on and try this again. So this is what F7 will give you. This is the screen that asks you what device you want to start the computer from. From here, you could do Boot Manager, which is normal. You could choose your USB stick here, but notice how it says UEFI. We can't start DOS within UEFI mode. So we need to enter the setup first. So scroll down and press Enter. Then once you're into the BIOS, we want to scroll across the top using the arrow keys left and right. And you want to look for security, usually and you're looking for secure boot control. See how it is enabled? We're going to press enter on that and then disable it. Next, you're gonna to wanna to look for UEFI, which is usually under boot. So go to UEFI settings, UEFI boot is enabled. We'll just turn that to disabled and then we're done here. So press escape to get out, go across to exit, save changes and reset and yes. Now on startup, keep pressing F7, and you can see that we've got this F2 for setup, F7 boot options. And now we're into the boot menu again, and we've got more options. Notice how none of these say UEFI, and we're going to go for the USB stick, which in my case is Data Traveller G3. Press enter on that. It'll now ask you which keyboard layout to use, just press enter to use the default one. And now you're into the DOS prompt. From within this prompt, where it just says C, just type dir in and press enter and it'll tell you some information. These are the files that are stored on the USB stick. So you can see we've got the auto runs and uh, stuff like that that you could see on the computer. But we've also got BIOS which is a dir, a folder, that's a directory. What we're going to do now is type cd which changes the directory to within and then BIOS, press enter. Now we're in C BIOS, which is the BIOS folder. Now from this folder, this is where we're going to run the update to actually update the BIOS. Make sure that your laptop is plugged into mains, make sure the battery is a bit charged, because if this goes wrong, it can break the laptop completely. So now, if you check the website from earlier, I'll put a screenshot here showing you the steps from there. It will show that you need to run EC Flash to update the firmware. That is what it's called in this case, your laptop might have a different file name, so just double check that on the BIOS page. It's usually in bold. So to run that, all we do is we type EC flash into the command window where it says C BIOS EC flash now, and then press enter. This will now open this download utility. This EC flash will update the EC firmware. Then what we need to do is after the computer's restarted or turned itself off, 
we'll power it on again and boot from the USB stick again to flash the main BIOS. So in this case, uh, it shut down and didn't restart itself. So now I'm going to turn the laptop on again. And I'm going to keep pressing F7, as we did before, to get back to the boot options screen. Now here, I'm going to select the USB stick again. Let it start up. Press Enter again to keep the keyboard layout. Type in CD BIOS. Type in dir again, just make sure, see, we can see that we're in the BIOS folder, and these are all the files that are in there. Next, what we want to do, now that EC firmware update has finished, is we want to run the actual BIOS update itself. So to do this, once you are in C BIOS, just type flash, and it'll run the flash file. So press enter. So what it's doing is it's erasing the BIOS software on the motherboard updating it, verifying it to check it completed OK and then it will tell us it's completed. This can take a couple of minutes depending on the laptop and the USB stick. Now that's completed, the laptop has turned itself off. We can turn it back on again, check that it starts up and enter the BIOS again. I think in this case it has automatically re-enabled secure boot so it may not enter the BIOS for us. Oh no, there we go. So now let's just keep pressing F7 again. I'm going to enter setup. Note that I have not unplugged the USB stick yet. And in the BIOS now, it may look a bit different depending on what the update did for you, but your BIOS version should have changed along with the EC firmware revision here. These should both have updated. So now what you need to do to allow the laptop to boot normally into Windows or whatever software you were running is to go back across to boot, go to UEFI settings and find UEFI boot and enable. Then you can press escape to come out of there, go back to security, find secure boot and enable that again and then go to exit, save changes and reset. Yes, now unplug your USB stick once the computer restarts and it should load straight into Windows or whatever other software you're running as it did before but with the latest BIOS version so this is now all ready for the upgrade that I'm going to perform that should hopefully work putting this Core i5 processor in a mSATA SSD and a couple of other bits and pieces I'll be making another video on that which will be on my YouTube channel you'll also have a link to that in the description down below so if you found this video helpful please leave a like down below any questions, leave a comment down in the comments section below and get subscribed for future random technology videos like this one.